Moses' people were suffering. Moses lost his, his family as he was put into that basket and sent down the river. Moses was raised in an environment that would have been unfamiliar to his people, but he still heard and saw the suffering of those around him, and that led him to act. He killed someone, yes, but he still saw the suffering first. And I don't know what was going on within the heart of Moses, but I know that in our own worlds that Jesus is cursing today of Chorazin, Bethsaida, that this is a call for us to examine what might have been happening in the heart of Moses and what might have be happening now in our own hearts. Because when we suffer, so many different things can happen. So many questions can begin to bubble up within our mind, within our hearts, that, that deal exclusively with God. Where is God in the midst of my suffering? Why isn't he acting? Maybe we even get to the point of bitter cynicism and say, why would he act? If he hasn't done anything yet, why would he do something now? And for Moses, maybe that was in his heart. He needed time. And he needed to see how the Lord was working in his life so that he could have the courage, although weakly, to be able to lead God's people out of slavery. And God did speak. God broke into his life. God broke into his heart, and he spoke to Moses. He said, go back to Egypt. Go back to my people who cry out to me in their pain." Jesus Christ, the very word of God made flesh, speaks into our world. He speaks a word of promise. He speaks the gospel, the good news of saying, you are so infinitely loved. You are so infinitely precious to me. I want to bring healing to your life. I want to bring meaning to your life and direction to your life that will lead you to eternity. And 2,000 years ago, he was met with all sorts of different kind of responses because he preached the word, but he also did mighty deeds. He spoke the truth, but he lived the truth. And because of that, he was able to bring healing into people's lives that many people had never seen before. The blind could now see, the deaf could hear, the lame could walk, the dead were raised. And yet, in the midst of all of that, there were people who did not believe. That even when they saw these mighty acts of God, when they saw the power of God before them, they went back to those same wounds and they went back to those same cemented hearts and let doubt fester. Where is God? Why would he be working now? They let cynicism fester. Why would God want to be with us now? He hasn't been with us for so long. Why would he be here now? They let indifference fester. What does it matter if God does mighty works? We have a sacred task in this world today to reject the bitterness of cynicism to reject the doubts, to reject the indifference, and by the faith that was given to us in baptism to be able to say, Jesus, I see you in my midst. I see you in my own life, and I see you in the life of those people that I serve, that I minister to, that I teach. Jesus, I see you, or even if we're in a weak place, Jesus, I want to see you. Because what the world doesn't need more of is cynicism, doubt, and indifference. And if we who by our baptisms are given this gift of faith can't show them something different, can't show them a different way, can't show them Jesus Christ in their midst, who is going to? 
This is our sacred task. This is our sacred mission entrusted to us by Jesus Christ. Go, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Show the world that I am here. Show the world that I am in your midst. But we can't do that if if we don't see him. We can't do that if we're stuck in that miry pit of indifference, bitterness, bitter cynicism, or doubt. Jesus Christ, let us see you. That's what he wants for us. He wants us to see him. He wants us to see him in the person where everyone else says there's no hope. That it's easier just to push them to the side and give up on them. He wants to see us, he wants to see him in the midst of a situation that seems so complex and complicated and as if nothing can be changed and said, your faith can move mountains. Trust in me and see me now. But it has to start with seeing him here. Jesus, let me see you in my heart and let my heart be conformed to your sacred heart so that I can see you I can see your mighty works so that I can love you and love the people that you've entrusted to me. 